I'm angry with all of you because you didn't go see a lot of the best movies of the year. But you can play catch up thanks to my list of the top 10 most underrated movies of 2014 on this week's episode of Angry Nerd. Okay, everyone agrees that television is in the middle of a golden age or platinum age, dilithium age. Whatever. There are all of these terrific, compelling, challenging series from HBO, AMC, Showtime, Netflix, Amazon. But feature-length movies that play in theaters are actually still pretty good, if you know where to look. Which, come to think of it, will probably be your TV screen at this point. Oh well, here are 10 overlooked films that truly deserve your attention. Jim Jarmusch's flick was the most compelling depiction of vampires I've seen in years. I mean, come on, if Dracula was real, he wouldn't be a blockbuster action hero laying waste to rival armies or a sparkly teen heartthrob canoodling with a twitchy wooden actress. He would waste his days lounging around and sucking on gourmet bloodsicles like the decadent Euro trash that he is. This half live action, half animated adaptation of Stanislaw Lem's classic sci-fi satire is easily the most mind-bending film of the year. Robin Wright is terrific as an actress who sells her likeness rights to Hollywood and then crosses over into a strange, hallucinogenic alternate universe. It's like Ralph Bakshi's Cool World, if Ralph Bakshi's Cool World was not absolutely terrible. Now, you'd hardly know it from the ad campaign, but this clever, no-budget dramedy about two couples and their unusual relationship issues has a huge sci-fi twist. It's really odd. Saying more would spoil it. Just, just be sure to check it out. What a relief to see an action movie with almost no dialogue or plot or special effects to distract from the action. Bonus. Google around to find a video of director Gareth Evans discussing his top five favorite fight scenes of all time. His list is one of my top five, top five lists. Stephen Chow is like a cross between Jackie Chan and Peter Jackson, a master of slapstick comedy, martial arts, and digital effects. Now, he's been all but ignored stateside since Kung Fu Hustle, but this adaptation of a classic 16th century Chinese novel is worth tracking down. The greatest sci-fi flick of the 1970s was never actually filmed. Cult director Alejandro Hodorowsky's planned adaptation of Frank Herbert's novel Dune collapsed under the weight of its own ambitions before it made it off the drawing board. But the sketchy outline that survives, which is lovingly presented in this new documentary, captures the imagination in ways that few actual produced sci-fi flicks do. A South Korean adaptation of a French science fiction comic starring Captain America sold its depiction of a class war aboard a high-tech train rocketing around a ruined Earth is as thought-provoking as it is thrilling. This film made a bundle overseas, but it bombed stateside. What is wrong with us, America? This satire of rom-com cliches starring Amy Poehler and Paul Rudd was a hoot. Some griped that it arrived too late to really skewer its source material. Seriously, that's like saying Wet Hot American Summer is a failure because it was released two decades after Meatballs. Hayao Miyazaki is great and all, but Isao Takahata is the unsung anime genius of Studio Ghibli. The director's newest release, an adaptation of a Japanese folk tale, came and went from theaters, but it ranks right up there with his classics like Pompoko and Grave of the Fireflies. Ugh, let's pour one out for Live, Die, Repeat, the Tom Cruise movie formerly known as Edge of Tomorrow. Doug Liman's terrific adaptation of the clever Japanese sci-fi novel was the best blockbuster of the year, and it should have been a huge hit, but it bombed so terribly that the studio renamed it for the DVD release, the way its protagonist continually gets to relive the last 48 hours over and over and over again. Now, this is a Tom Cruise movie that even Tom Cruise haters can love. Thanks to the Groundhog Day style story structure, you get to see him die dozens and dozens of times. I stand by everything I said about it at the time of its release. It's the best movie ever made about video games, even though it's not about video games. Huh, maybe I'll go back in time and warn the studio not to give it such a lame title. And I'll also warn myself not to eat that ceviche from 7-Eleven, ugh. By the way, I hate top 10 lists. It's such an arbitrary limitation. 
I wish it was a top 67 list so I could have included Cooties, Open Windows, The Rover, Enemy, The Double, Zero Theorem, Automata, Blue Ruin, Coherence, Stretch, The Babadook, under the skin, the vanquishing of the witch, Baba Yaga. Hey, don't fade out, I'm not done yet. A most wanted man, to be to K, the Galapagos affair, Alan Partridge. What do you think is the most underrated movie of 2014? Let me know in the comments and click down here to subscribe for more Angry Nerd. And you can check out more of my reviews as well as other great clips from Wired by clicking on any of the, any of, any of these. Click on any of these over here. You're right.